A U.S. general has been shot and killed by a gunman believed to have been an Afghan soldier. If you look at the map here, it happened just outside of the, the capital uh, of Kabul at a training center for Afghan military officers. This is basically, as we've been talking to reporters, uh, inside of Kabul, it's likened to an Afghan uh, version of West Point, uh, where the country's future military leaders are trained. Up to 15 others, including some Americans and a German brigadier general, were wounded in the same attack. We can tell you at this hour that the gunman, the assailant here, was killed by whom we do not yet know. The Pentagon says the general's death is one of the highest ranking American deaths in the war since 9-11-2001. Let's get more from CNN's chief national security correspondent, Jim Shudo, who is live for us at the Pentagon right now, and former CIA counterterrorism official Philip Mudd standing by to offer his analysis as well. So welcome to both of you. And just Jim Shudo to you. Uh, what is the very latest? What do we know? Well, Brooke, certainly a grim day for the people here in the Pentagon, but also for coalition forces in Afghanistan. As you say, uh, the most senior U.S. Uh, general killed since 9-11. In fact, a three-star general who was killed here in the Pentagon on 9-11. Uh, but a significant toll as well. Fifteen injured, eight of them American, and we're told that eight, se several of those injuries uh, are serious. I've also learned that this attacker was an Afghan soldier who had gone through a vetting process because these so-called green on blue attacks, Afghan soldiers attacking coalition forces, have been an ongoing problem uh, with the U.S. military for a number of years now. They've introduced a vetting process. This soldier went through that vetting process, but still this morning turned his gun, a light machine gun, I'm told, uh, on, these, uh, on these soldiers, uh, killing that one U.S. general and injuring several more seriously. And that raises very serious questions, not only about the vetting process, but also about what's going underway right now, which is the transition from uh, security in Afghanistan being handled by coalition forces in the lead uh, to Afghan forces. And those two issues I raised with the Pentagon spokesman, Admiral John Kirby, a short time ago here in the briefing room. Here's how he answered Brooke. I wonder this bigger picture. We're months away from uh, Afghan, from the U.S. handing over security responsibility for Afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, to Afghan forces like these. Uh, does this undermine your confidence in their ability to take over that role? Great questions, Jim. First, uh, too soon to tell on, on what this means for the vetting process. Uh, again, we believe this individual uh, was a member of the Afghan National Security Forces. We need to let the investigation proceed to figure out exactly who this was before we can leap to any conclusions about the vetting process. On your second question, I would say, uh, and, and uh, General Dunford uh, mentioned this uh, in, in uh, his discussion with the Secretary uh, today, the Afghan National Security Forces continue to perform um, at a very strong level of competence and confidence and warfare capability. We're told that this was a routine visit to the National Defense University, the Marshall Fahim National Defense University. This is a massive training facility outside of Kabul, the, cap the capital in Afghanistan, where they are underway with training, uh, you know, the senior leaders of Af the Afghan military going forward. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is, a, you know, it's a real blow to those efforts to have an attack like this take place uh, at what, what is really Afghanistan's West Point, Brooke. 